morning, champions. You're welcome to church. We're still in the assembly of the God begotten, and as we started a couple of weeks ago, we're still examining what it means to be begotten of love. Today, we're looking at something called begotten of love, dressed in humility. Today and next week, we'll, we'll stay in that place. And our text is still where we've been. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, and 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 13, verse 4, which essentially gives us the explanation of 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And then 1 Corinthians explains that this love suffers long. This love is kind. This love does not envy. This love does not parade itself. This love is not puffed up. When I hear the word parade, it speaks to dressing up, to displaying yourself. If you remember fashion parade, you dress up, you display yourself. You display yourself. Now, Paul is simply saying love has no need to be the center of attraction, the center of attention, to impress to gain recognition, to show off, to flaunt itself. Love does not pretend to be what it is not. Love doesn't make somebody or something into what it is not. It does not talk with excessive pride and self-satisfaction about its achievements, its positions, or abilities. Love is not boastful, nor, neither does it make ostentatious public display of itself or, it, or its accomplishments. The key word here is boast. Like NIV says, love does not boast. Now, when you look at boasting that way, you know, we immediately say, the Bible says, let him who boasts, boast in the law, so boasting cannot be bad. So what is wrong with boasting and what is boasting? Boasting is self-absorption. This is my own definition. Because self-absorption is when you are so self-satisfied and focused on your achievements, your positions, your abilities, you, you, you're focused on you, you, you. The world revolves around you. Boasting turns your focus away from God, away from people, and into yourself. So the, that's, in my opinion, is the basic problem with boasting. And because you're so self-focused, or because we are so self-focused when we boast, we overestimate people's interest level in us and underestimate our annoyance quotient. That's just something I made up to explain how annoying we can be when we are self-absorbed. Boasting is self-absorption. Self-absorption leads to self-glorification. And self-glorification is a sin against God. Now, boasting fails to acknowledge God because all you can see is you. Your strength, your discipline, your prayer, your fasting, your doggedness, your perseverance. You would not even be here if you were not as disciplined and careful as you are. So boasting eliminates God from your life. And it does not acknowledge God as the source of all blessing. That boasting also sacrifices your relationship and, and nullifies your true identity. I will explain more on this point next week because... I, as, as I studied, I discovered boasting and is not puffed up. Love, love does not boast and love is not puffed up. It's a very thin line. They can overlap. So I'll start this week and I'll continue next week. So why does love not boast? Why does love not parade itself? Love does not boast because it cares love when it's love. cares about how the other person feels. Love recognizes that each of us have our own unique journeys, appreciates the other person's path, and acknowledges God as, as the ultimate planner of all lives. Love does not boast because love is grateful for the privilege to love and be loved. You cannot be both vain glorious, as King James renders that verse, and boastful at the same time, and grateful at the same time. Those two don't go together, pride and gratitude. They are not bedmates, they are not friends. A boastful person is too self-absorbed to be sincerely grateful. And just in case I'm talking and you're thinking about it like, I don't boast, I don't brag, 
that's juvenile. I'm 60, I'm 80, I'm 99. I've outgrown that. I came, I came with what I call the vaunting mirror. So if you speak with exaggeration, no, you add salt and sugar, with an excessive pride, especially about yourself, if when people meet you, maybe friends, family, strangers, all you talk about is yourself, your feet, your projects, your ideas, your accomplishments, your travels, your grades, your amazing life, your spouse, your children who are geniuses, your, you know, when you meet people, all you talk about is you, 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 and in all your talking, you forget, you don't even pause to ask the next person, how are you? And if you ask, before the person says, I am doing great, you return back to the most important subject in the world to you, which is you. And even when you allow the person to talk, you are not really listening because you are busy arranging the next line of the achievement in your life that you want to get back to. So if you, if, if you feel this still the mirror, if you, if you must always be the center of attra attraction, of attention, and you feel hurt when you are not, if you feel the desire to have your anonymous donation acknowledged one way or the other, and if it's not acknowledged, you stop sending it. If you are offended because you did something nice to your spouse and the person did not notice it. If you use your spiritual gift, that one, I'm guilty. If you use your spiritual gift <laughs> for display or self-aggrandizement, if you often find yourself losing your voice because of singing the praises of your philanthropy, your greatness, your ability, your positions, your achievements. So after all of that, you don't have voice to sing to God again. You've been so busy talking about you, talking about what you've done. If you often catch yourself behaving in a manner that is unmindful of the feelings or interests of others, if you feel the need to draw the attention to yourself or to what you're doing, then you have a boasting problem. Self-promotion is hiding in your heart. And just if all of that still looks like, well, I don't fit in there, why did you post the picture you took at, say, uh, Marriott or Five Star the other time? You said, Facebook, preserve this memory for me. Were you actually preserving the memory or you wanted to let us know where you have been? Because these things are so subtle that sometimes we just feel like, I don't do this, this is too juvenile. You met an old classmate. And in all the discussions, there, there could be anything you could talk about in five minutes. But you just jumped and talked about how dollar is so high. I can't send money to my son who is in Harvard. Were you just complaining about dollars, the exchange rate? Or did you try to let that person know that me, that you used to look down on in school? I have a son. He is in Harvard. I send him money. Was that a complaint about exchange rate or was it veiled attempt at making the other person inferior? Love does not parade itself. If you have a boasting problem, if you do these things and sometimes you come off feeling because boasting, in order to feel good, you have to put the other person down. There are no two ways about it. Whether you are conscious of it or not, it is designed to put the next person down to make that person inferior, to make that person question God, like, I'm naked, oh dear. If you have that problem, then begin by not comparing yourself with other people. To see who is better or worse. And then learn how to treat people with affectionate regard. God died for everybody. The day you begin to look at people through that eyes, through those lenses, that the God who loves you, loves your enemy, your prayers will change. Your behavior will change. Because that enemy you are saying, God killed. God died for that person. God loves that person. God cares for that person. Recognize that your blessing are for the services of others, for the glory of God. Your blessing is not a weapon of life's annihilation. God did not give you blessing so you could go around demolishing lives. Don't weaponize your blessing. Don't put it in people's faces. It says, um, st uh, still waters run deep. The mightier you are, the more you should intentionally step away from looking at you and focusing on others and focusing on God. 
Today, God just had, God wanted us to look into ourselves to really see if self-promotion is hiding, mind my language, hiding in your heart because sometimes it could be there and you are not aware. And if that's a problem you have, this last point, I want you to ask God to forgive us. I want us to ask God to forgive us for all the times we have racked, knowingly and unknowingly, and it wasn't about him. For all the times we've boasted, for all the times we made other people question the justice and the love of God, for weaponizing God's blessings and privileges in our lives. As the service goes on, and even as you're sitting down, I just want you to bow your head. Even as we are confessing, our, making our confession, you talk to your father and tell him, forgive me for all the times I have turned my blessing into a weapon. Let's rise and make our confession. Say, I am called to imitate Jesus. Say that like that's going to become your mantra. I am called to imitate Jesus. I am begotten of love to manifest love. I intentionally dress myself in the garment of a humble servant. I am called to walk in humility. I am contented in being myself. I am not obsessed with getting my own advantage. Daily, I forget myself long enough to lend a helping hand. I pursue the well-being and success of the people in my sphere. I am God's hand-picked representative. I am chosen by God for this new life of love. I embrace a spirit of kindness and humbleness of mind. I do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain glory. I am not only concerned for my own interests. I am also on the lookout for the interests of others. I am begotten of love to demonstrate love. I am clothed with the garments of Christ. The love of God is shed abroad in my heart. I am free from pride-filled opinions. I embrace my calling to love and serve. I am learning to treat people with affectionate regard. My blessings are for the service of others. Not a weapon of life's demolition. I am an ambassador of love. I represent God amongst the people I live with. I am called to dress myself in humility. I am not driven with the cheap, by the cheap desire to boast. As God helps me, I walk in authentic humility and put others first. I abandon every display of selfishness and empty arrogance. I am dressed in Christ and I am up and awake to what God is doing. I choose to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Just raise your voice and ask God to help you to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Whether you are a student, whether you are married or single, tell God, help me to follow in your footsteps. Whether you are a government leader, whether you are a private person in business, tell him, Lord, help me to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Holy Spirit, help me to follow in the footsteps of Christ.